An Art Nouveau Tiffany Stained Glass Watercolor Project by Hajra Meeks. So here's a little piece of scrap paper, and before I get going on the final watercolor piece, I'm actually just going to draw a little outline demo on this little piece of paper. With other watercolor projects, you may or may not have an outline in the final painting, so you may or may not be able to use these pens. But in this case, I do have these strong, bold outlines in the final piece because it's supposed to be imitating a piece of stained glass. So I have the excuse to use these different pens and basically make myself a little coloring page. Now you may have a lot of pens that you have and they may all say archival and permanent. They may not be perfect for this project. So I'm showing you how you can figure this out. So on this little scrap piece of paper, I'm drawing just some random lines to make a quick stained glass little square and I'm using three different pens that I have. So what I have here is an Itoya marker, a Zig marker, and also an Elegant Rider calligraphy pen. The Zig marker actually has two sides to it. It has a fine point and also a bigger point which is for thicker areas. I'm actually showing you the finer point for this, but I'm not going to use it in my final piece because I think the thicker markers work much better to in fact a stained glass look. So now I'm going to label these for clarity. So this is the zig marker and this is also the zig marker with the finer point. This is the Itoya marker. It's actually also two-sided, but I've only used one side. And it's for calligraphy but you can use it for artwork as well. And the last one I have is this Elegant Writer calligraphy pen and it's also a chisel tip but again you can hold it on its edge and use it for drawing or make thin and thick lines with it. So now I've got some water and what I'm going to do is just take some water and wet these markers. And as I've shown in a previous video, some of these markers move or their ink moves when you put water on them. The Zig marker, as you can see, doesn't move at all, which makes it perfect for underpainting underneath watercolor. So it won't scoot at all if you put any kind of wash on it, whether it's clear water or if it's paint. So that's the one I'm going to use for this project. The Itoya one bleeds immediately. So even though this is an archival marker, it bleeds. Now if you're going for a washi pen and ink look, this is great, but not good for these really neat stained glass lines that I want. And the Elegant Rider one is making a big mess too. So I'm not going to use either of those. And again, if you want to do a sort of blurry wash, if you're doing something that's like a blurry pen and ink wash, and then on top of that you want watercolor, these will work great for that. But for this project, the Zig marker is going to be my choice because I don't want these lines to move at all. So I have not used this fine tip. I have used the blunt tip, which is thicker, to give me these sort of really thick lines that look like they're led in between this glass. And I'm going to use these gelatos, which I just got. If I pull out my color wheel, you can see that these are the Creta color colors right on the top, which I've used before. And these are the gelato colors and other metallic pencil colors. So the Creta colors are actually brighter, but I'm going to give these gelatos a shot because so many other people are using them on YouTube and I did get them. Uh, I guess I should just tell you already that I kind of hated them <laughs> in comparison to fine art materials. So I'm doing this first color in the gold color and it's giving me this crayon texture and with the Creta color aqua sticks when you go to add water on top of it if you add enough water that crayon texture goes away because the the water color or the water soluble pigment in the Creta color aqua sticks is so fluid that it doesn't leave that texture behind if you don't want to leave it behind. With these gelatos, I was very disappointed because I'm trying to now blend this so it looks like smooth stained glass. And maybe you can't see it in the video, but if you see this in real life and maybe you can see it in the video too, that crayon texture is not going away. It doesn't matter how much I'm blending it. So I am going to decide right after I finish doing this bronzy gold color 
that I am not going to color those gelatos directly onto the paper, even though that would have been the easy choice. But now I can't do that because obviously these gelatos aren't uh, blendable enough. So I would say this was already a bad first start, so I figured that these would be harder to use than finer art materials. So, well, I bought them, <laughs> so I'm going to use them. But I wouldn't suggest you get these unless you have them already, then use them. Otherwise, it's just wasting money. So here's the Creta Color Aqua Stick. It's the only color in this entire painting that I'm using with the Creta Color. It's this yellow, and that's because the gelatos don't have this bright yellow. And I wanted that bright yellow in here because I see that in the stained glass reference that I'm using. So I pulled out my plexiglass palette. And I'm actually now just cutting little slices off of my gelatos, the way I've done with my aqua sticks before. And they should just melt if they are, you know, doing what they're supposed to do, which is being water soluble. They should melt so I can use them with a brush on the painting. So now I'm just cutting all my colors and I'm keeping the shape of my color wheel. So you can see yellow and purple are across from each other, red and green are across from each other. So this is the shape of a traditional color wheel with the complements being across from each other. And you can face different colors up. I always put yellow at the top. So here's my blue. And I think that's all my colors. And now I'm going to add a little bit more of the yellow Creta Color Aqua Stick because I feel like I might need more yellow. Scoot that nasty stuff away from my Creta Color. And now I'm adding water. And you can already see with that bright yellow that it's melting in its own puddle, that Creta Color Aqua Stick. These gelatos, uh, and it's just not working. So I have to go get my palette knife, which I haven't used before, but luckily I had it around. So now I'm just going to squash these to death because as you can see, that nice creta color yellow is still melting away in its own little puddle. And actually it took me something like 13 minutes to smash all of these into goo like this. And that's just a waste of my time because these are supposed to be water soluble. So they're actually not as water soluble as they said. So again, I don't think the gelatos are worth the big whatever, the hoo-ha to get these because they don't work very well. All my other higher quality uh, water soluble stuff and watercolors are much better than that. So anyway, now that I've spent something like 13 minutes squashing all that stuff, I'm going to mix my intermediate colors, my yellow green, my orange yellow, my blue violet, and all those colors. And I should also warn you that what happened to me was every time those dried out a little bit, I kept having to not just add water, but squash them all with my palette knife. I don't know that if you have a uh, limited hand energy, if you wanna buy gelatos and use them like this. I'm starting to paint all of this on there. I've already painted the bronze yellow part. I am struggling to put it on there much more than I would normally if it was just a water soluble color. It's kind of going down like an oily wax, so it's kind of resistant to spreading the way that normal watercolor paints are. So again, even though this was advertised as water soluble, it doesn't really go down so easily. But it is workable. You just have to keep adding more water and smashing it around. And you can put it down in a very thin glaze without it fighting too much, but if you want it to go on in a thicker glaze and you sort of have to pat it down like it's putty or something. So I'm also adding different layers to my colors here. So they don't mix as well as I would have liked on the palette. Even though I did mix colors, I found that it was easier to just mix them on the painting. So I put down green or blue, and then I've added different colors on top, like blue to the green to make a teal. And it works better on the page than it does on the palette. I should also mention that once you're all done with the gelatos and the coloring part of this that you will have to go back and redo the black outline because the opaque gelatos do semi cover up that black outline. And what I'm going to do, because it's a stained glass and I really want to preserve a look of transparency, I'm going to actually leave some sections here that just have a bit of the white of the paper showing through and I'm only going to put a, a sort of a shadow pigment on those areas so they look like white panes with some reflected light. 
I'm just going to do the rest of the painting in exactly the same manner. So there's no other hidden techniques. And again, notice how I've left some panels lighter, so that way it gives some luminosity to the whole page instead of it just being opaque gelatos everywhere. So now it's your turn to find an old Tiffany stained glass piece off of Google and make your own Art Nouveau stained glass project.